Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, Friday Night Highlights. Where's Bert? Bert. <laughs> Bert's gone. Oh, no. <laughs> we've, got some, <laughs> we've got some amazing guests tonight. We've got Patty the Panda, Jonathan from Some People Like It, Mike Brain Daddy, Danielle Duchess Prim, and Amanda Hen, and of course, Food Expert. Uh, let's Export. go ahead and <laughs> I want everyone to introduce themselves. Let's start out with uh, Patty. Hello, potato. Um, my name is Paddy the Panda. Um, I'm from Ireland. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate that. Uh, on TikTok, I'm Paddy the Panda. Um, my content is normally political, a little bit of comedy, and you know, a bit of sexy talk. You know how it is. I did a couple of thirst traps recently that went down really well. Thank you very <laughs> much. Um, I'm like the Irish, more popular version of Brain Daddy. Um, oh. which like that everybody. Um, uh, and I'm really excited to be here. Um, if you want to follow me on the other stuff, I'm Paddy the Panda on most things. So thanks very much for having me. Awesome. All right, next we have Jonathan Davis from Some People Like It. Well, now I want to see those thirst traps from Patty. I'm mm -hmm. Jonathan. I go by Some People Like It on uh, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. I do uh, political humor, political posts, uh, some really bad sketches. Uh, and I like to do news stories that people haven't seen or bring context to news stories that everybody's talking about. And so that's me. Yeah, some people like it. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Awesome. And next no thirst we traps. Have, <laughs> no thirst traps. Next we have Mike Brain Daddy YT. Hi, I'm Patty the Panda of <laughs> the Americas. Uh, I, <laughs> I did a thirst trap too, but I don't think I did it right because... I just drank a bunch of beverages, so I think I did it, was, it wrong. It was super moist. It was very moist. Oh, I do comedy-ish uh, on my channel, and that's all I have to say, so I hate being on this. Okay, great. All right, next we have <laughs> a really special guest tonight. For the first time, we have Danielle Duchess Prim. Take it away, lady. Hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here. So I am Duchess Prim, Duchess with a T, the old spelling. I know I'm weird. Um, I do political, sociopolitical comedy, um, a little bit of serious, a little bit of passionate. Um, yeah, I basically got on TikTok, you know, when the world started falling apart and realized I was too old for it. But I said, let's write it out. <laughs> um, on, on Instagram, I'm Duchess.Prim. And on TikTok or on Twitter, I am Duchess Prim. So follow me if you want to see more comedy. And I love roasting Donald Trump. Yeah. Awesome. And you do such a good job at doing it. I live for your comedy. Um, <laughs> next we have the beautiful and always hilarious and potty mouth Amanda Hen. Hey, everybody. It's the cousin grandma. Ooh. That <laughs> you can find me on um, everything is Nadine is woke or Amanda Hen, whatever. Just type it into Google, you'll find me. <laughs> um, as somebody said on uh, one of the responses, I'm just a tired, worn, old out actress <laughs> trying me to find too. something to do. You are amazing. Mm -hmm. And actually, last but not least, we have Food Expert, who is kind of the creator of all of this. Um, Bert, take it away. Yeah, so I just started this a couple months ago with Walter Masterson, Lord Tim Mathias, and Maya2960. And we first did our live stream, and then we just kind of went on from there. And we keep on going, and we keep on bringing on new people. And, you know, we bring back out the old, bring in some new people like, <laughs> like Duchess Prem and it's just really great, like meeting all the different TikTok creators and, you know, networking. And we just we just are a community, a tight community of maybe like 40 TikTokers or something. So, I mean, we just we just keep going. Uh, my channel is called Food Expert, and I travel the world trying to show people kind of what's outside of their own country. 
I travel in Asia, travel in Europe, and travel everywhere. Just, you know, people like in America don't think that it's good to travel. They think, oh, no, I'm going to see all the states in America. I'm proud to be an American. And it's just like, no, travel like a Canadian and go see the world. Ooh. Don't just stay in your country forever okay. like a North Korean. Oh, so anyways, God. um sorry to the North Koreans wow. who are watching. Jesus. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> They're not watching. They're not allowed. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, Ooh. uh my channel is just about encouraging and traveling. Food X Bert. So it's like X and then Bert is my name. So it's like food expert. It's a play on words, joking. But it's always it's always great oh, when you have to explain it. I'm in on that one. <laughs> All right. So and I will introduce myself. I am Mermaid Mama Maggie or Maggie Weed. Um, you can find me on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram and TikTok. That's where I spend most of my time. Um, I'll be hosting this evening. And without further ado, we're going to get into our first clip of the night. Um, this is all about the uh, transition of power that is started to happen this week. So, and then we'll be mm -hmm. that again. Welcome back. We've got some breaking news. Joe Biden, president-elect, giving his first interview since becoming president-elect. He just sat down with NBC's Lester Holt. Let's get to Kayla Tausche with the exclusive sound. Kayla. Melissa, that interview wrapping just a few moments ago following President-elect Biden's announcement of some key national security and foreign policy appointments. And in that sit-down interview, Biden says the peaceful transfer of power, a hallmark of American democracy, has begun. The head of the GSA yesterday uh, unlocked the mechanisms for there to be a formal transition of power, recognizing uh, your status right now. Is that happening on the ground? Are there people talking right now who yes. weren't talking yesterday? Yes. Immediately, we've gotten outreach from, uh, from the National Security Shop, from uh, to just across the board. And uh, they're already working out my ability to get presidential daily briefs. We're already working out meeting with the COVID team in the White House and how to not only distribute, but get a, from a vaccine being distributed to a, be a person able to get vaccinated. So I think we're going to not be so far behind the curve as we thought we might be in the past. And there's a lot of immediate discussion. And, uh, and, and I must say, the outreach has been sincere. There's, it's not been begrudging so far. And I don't expect it to be. So, the, yes, it's already begun. All right, guys. So let's jump into this. Um, I kind of want to touch on a couple of topics, mainly um, the transitional power, but also maybe some disbelief on uh, the uh, opposing side. So go. Ugh. Transition, is this kind of like the other kind of stuff I've heard about? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh my. We're live now, Amanda. Oh, I'm yes. sorry. <laughs> I couldn't help no, it. I think we needed a little left. <laughs> Yeah. But, I think it's uh, interesting, though, Trump came out today saying, was it today or this week, saying that he would offer a peaceful transition of power even, you know, only if Biden won and the Electoral College said that he won the election, which they basically right. said that we're just waiting until the 14th. So he's like, he's exhausted all of his legal battles, but now that we're just waiting yesterday. for him to like did go you, to did bed. You, yeah. Did you hear the way he said it, though? It was just so like... Yeah, yeah, but he it. changed I mean, it, y'all. Right. He changed it today to say he will only let Biden in the White House if he can prove that all the 80 million votes were legal. Of course. Oh. But, but let's I'm, let's be clear here. Like Donald Trump can say all he wants. He it won't. doesn't make a diddly squat of a difference. <laughs> on, at at eleven fifty nine on the twentieth of January. Donald Trump has to vacate that place regardless. It doesn't matter how much he wants to be there. It doesn't matter how much he believes that there's voter fraud or election fraud. None of that matters. Once the Electoral College votes and once Congress approves that vote on the 6th of January, Donald Trump can do absolutely fucking nothing. And I made a video Ooh. today saying that if it happens, I will go over and pull him out by the baldy head if I have to myself. So, yeah, I think we're, we're all just panicking just a little bit because it's been almost a month since the election day itself. I think yeah. a lot of people too have the this this connection that conceding means 
it has any kind of significant meaning. His supporters especially think that like if he doesn't say the words I concede, he can't then Joe Biden can't be president. Little well, do they know it's only that's just an act of good sportsmanship, if anything. Right. It has right. no actual legal substantial anything. There's nothing in the constitution. It's just a hey, I accept that I lost and I'm leaving now. Money on so, the twentieth yeah, of January really at noon. It won't matter if right. he says I concede or nothing. It's what yeah. the Constitution says, not what Donald Trump says. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't need his concession, and I think it's right. that he thinks that we do. Right. But I think that it's interesting that is it has exposed loopholes in our Constitution. You know, everybody's mm-hmm. like, "Oh, our Constitution is the greatest document ever." Well, no, there are loopholes. Like these electors do not have to vote the way the state votes. Oh, yes, they it's do. Just histor- no, they don't. There was actually <laughs> faithless electors in 2016. Remember, it went to the Supreme Court, and the well, Supreme right. Court said you have to vote as you were sent. Yeah, but what about this new Supreme that's- Court? No, Honey, that's, it's yeah, that's, already been done. I mean, precedent. No, there were there were faithless electors in 2016. They they according I to the Constitution don't have to. After that happened, the, the it went to the Supreme Court, and this in 2017, and the Supreme Court said you have to, and you can be fined if you don't vote that the way you did. You don't have any right to vote differently than what you were sent there to do. But I think is that is you that trust the this, whole argument? The twenty twenty Supreme Court. Honey, it won't right. go back to the Supreme Court. Well, right. It's That's already what I'm saying. been do you done. Trust them? It yeah, doesn't matter what they will do. It's already been said what they have to do. So, so in terms in terms of the loopholes, so if you look at say states, states can invoke, uh, states can decide if they believe the the election was fraudulent. So states can actually take up mm-hmm. the issue and then nominate their own. Uh, uh-uh. electors and, that, no. and that's a loophole that's a loophole that i think jonathan was talking about that, that the u.s constitution needs to shore up uh, and certainly those loopholes are going to remain for as long as there's a conservative majority on the supreme court if it would go back to that phase but what jonathan said was right there was seven um votes that there went was in the, when, yes it was five for hillary and two for donald trump uh in 2016 so uh and the supreme court said that Electoral college voters need to be mindful of the chaotic uh, consequences of their vote, but it doesn't really stipulate the consequences mm-hmm. of that vote. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, that's the fine. Said, right? The fine they is like actually $1, said $1. they could be fined. Right, but yeah, if, they can, if they can get fined, though, is that like okay, whatever, I'll do it and I get fined? But let's don't you know. I think we need to be really it's... careful about st- you know about stating what can happen and what can't happen unless we have, you know, the actual document in front of us because we don't want to do kind of what we did. We didn't do anything last week, but we had someone that did. And we have to make sure that we're not spreading misinformation um, just like the other side. Well, what I would like to I mean, I'm looking it up real quick. I'm looking up real quick, you know, uh, an article... November 16th of 2020, New York Times, basically saying that it could happen. Um, I, I understand what you're saying, Nadine, but uh, there is a loophole and there is a possibility um, despite other rulings. But you're right until I you know, research it further and 100% sure. But the point is that there are loopholes. They're not going to work. It's not going to happen. I don't want to make anybody worried that it could possibly happen because it's not going to, uh-huh. but the, it does exist. I mean, that possibility does exist and the, the documents that we have as far as the Constitution are not perfect. And that's really the point I was trying to make. But the other thing we have to remember... I think I'm going to interject. Um, I also find that right now, you know, yes, there are the loopholes. I, I, I'm in agreement with that. But what I'm finding right now is that we have a complete kind of disbelief in this country that yeah. this election is actually done and Joe Biden will be the president. There's such a, a divide in our country. Can you guys speak on that a little bit? Well, I would blame, you know, I I, I don't know if you can blame one person for that, but I think what we really have to take into consideration after this year is what has been spotlighted. Right. You know, there is so much division because there has been this lift of, covering over all of the things in this country that we have kind of been hiding and just excusing away, i.e. racism 
and homophobia and xenophobia. And it's always been kind of on the minds, especially on the people on the left. But now it's really exposed and the people that were we're saying it doesn't exist, it's not real, are the ones lashing out now saying Trump 2020 and MAGA because they don't want to actually work through the motive behind those ideals. And they don't want to understand why they necessarily feel that way. So I think that Trump has exacerbated that, but he's also kind of oddly to thank for unveiling all of the issues that we have and making it so obvious. So now we have a starting point again of where to go from here. Well, we also have to uh, realize that it's it's only one side that's pushing the theory that the election is not over. Absolutely. And until they see Joe Biden pick up his hand and place it on the Bible and take the oath of office, honey, it's just, it's over. And nothing they say is going to change that fact. Nothing that Trump says is going to Take, you know, nothing's going to work. It's over. And well, speaking of change, guys, I think that um, the biggest thing that we do have to kind of focus on right now is winning this Senate, right? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think we're all in agreement that this is the most important fact because whether or not Joe Biden is going to be president or, oh, he is president, <laughs> whether or not, you know, he is in office, nothing is going to get done until we have you know, Senate control. So with that, I'm gonna play a clip real quick from the Colbert Show. Ooh. Hello, Georgia, remember me? It's your old buddy, Stephen Colbert. Did you enjoy voting in the 2020 election? Well, congratulations. You have qualified for the chance to vote again. And I'm here to help you do it. It's time for part one of our one part series, Better Know a Runoff. Tonight, the greatest state in the nation, Georgia, the voting peaches. Yes, Georgia, the state's so nice. They're voting there twice. And what makes Georgia the greatest? Well, for starters, both of your Senate seats are being decided in runoff elections on January 5th that will decide the balance of the U.S. Senate. It's all because Georgia law requires candidates to get more than 50% of the vote. And in the November election, no one managed to clear the majority threshold. The majority threshold, of course, also the name of the worst-selling John Grisham novel. Here's how you can get started voting in the Georgia Senate runoffs right now. For more information, as well as links to all the resources you need, check out betterknowaballot.com GA. Okay, first, make sure you're registered to vote. If you are a U.S. citizen and Georgia resident who is 18 by January 5th, you can register for the runoff election even if you weren't registered or old enough during the November election. Most Georgians can register online or... You can submit a form to your county board of registrars. The deadline to register is December 7th, a date that will live in democracy. Now, once you're registered, you can vote early in person starting December 14th with a photo ID. Find your county's hours and advanced voting locations on our website. You can also vote early absentee. First request your ballot online. The link is on our website. Ballots are sent out as early as November 18th, so to make sure you get your ballot in time to vote, request it now. Now, when you get your ballot, fill it out carefully, follow all directions, and sign where indicated. Return your completed ballot to your registrar's office or a secure drop-off location in your county before close of polls on Election Day. You can also return it by mail to the address provided on the envelope. If mailed, you will need a stamp and since your ballot must be received by January 5th, the U.S. Postal Service recommends sending it no later than December 29th. Play it safe and do it right away. You can also vote at your polling place with photo ID on the day of the runoff, January 5th. Wear a mask, wash your hands, go vote. So there you are, Georgia. Know another smart Georgian who wants to vote in the runoff? Just send them this video and spread the word using the hashtag BetterNoRunoff. I would love Guys, that. It was, it's a good I'm one. Like He's amazing. So um, let's talk about, you know, the importance of this. But also I want to touch upon kind of what happens with, with a lot of kind of noise on Twitter or not Twitter, on uh, TikTok that came with a lot of kind of misinformation, even while meeting. Please, Angle. <laughs> well, yeah, so I think I there was a lot of, 
Oh, go ahead, Jonathan. No, go ahead. Oh, well, I was just gonna say real quick that uh, Maggie had messaged me about that story. It was this TikToker who had a TikTok about <clears throat> people being purged from the Georgia rolls and it went around quick. Mm -hmm. Everybody was amplifying it left and right. And Maggie had messaged me and said that she couldn't find any stories about it. So I dug into it real quick and found out really fast that there's no legitimacy to that at all. Um, and I even got down to uh, Fair Fight, which is an organization that Stacey Abrams is associated with, who said that it was misinformation. And so I think it, it kind of points out that we need to be careful of our own confirmation bias and we need to verify stories because, you know, Georgia's had issues with elections. Uh, Stacey Abrams was robbed of the governorship because of their elections and their voter purges. So we wanted that story. We felt like that story could be true. And I think a lot of us ran with it without actually verifying it first. So it's kind of like a lesson to us. Like, hey, we need to verify. We need to make sure our confirmation bias is in check. I fell for Absolutely. it. Well, well, real quick, I just want to say, like, um, I didn't do it justice on TikTok because Jonathan wasn't available to do the video on it. But that information absolutely needs to get out. One of my biggest fears is misinformation and being on the wrong side of telling people what's happening and it being false. And it caught like fire. And the worst part about it, I think, is that the damage has kind of already been done, at least in our kind of stratosphere, um, because people aren't even seeing half of the videos that they did when they were talking about the, the, the voter suppression and stuff like that. So I well, think you need to be mindful. The only good thing about it is I think a lot of people check to make sure they're yeah. still on the rolls. And I think it will generate more people to go and vote. And I hated that I fell for it and I made a TikTok on it. I but I actually don't think that it's like for sure that it's untrue though. Like Yeah, I'm she, I'm never we, sure. It, no, I mean, we. it could be true. That's why everyone needs to go double check that they're registered to vote. And otherwise, you're just going to be showing up there and maybe 100,000 people will show up and be like, oh, you can't vote. And it'll, it won't be a story. So, I mean, whether or not that TikToker found the 10 people that were un, unregistered, I mean, if that is true, then that alone is a pretty big story, but we just don't know. We don't have that actual evidence in front of us, but neither did the news organizations that, that said that that was a false story or that was a false like impossibility because honestly, we've got Texas that is making a hundred thousand votes that were by car. Like people dropped off in the boxes and they, they just canceled all those votes. So, I mean, honestly, it's going on they in multiple to. states. Yeah, they, uh, tried. yeah, they tried to. But what's going to stop the most important election? This is the biggest one with Georgia. So yeah. the Republicans yeah. are going to try everything they can. That governor is a really horrible person, honestly. That governor didn't even know about the coronavirus. He said he didn't know about the coronavirus being infectious uh, after 15 days. Uh, I knew about that on January 20th. He didn't know that, and that was April 2nd when he came out and he decided, oh, uh, it is infectious. We're going to close down Georgia. And then they only closed down Georgia for like a week and a half or two weeks almost. So it was really a pathetic shutdown that Georgia did. So with this kind of government of Georgia, I can expect anything to come out of this government because they yeah. are not liable. So that's why I definitely – I disagree with you guys that that story really has got some possibility to it. Even though the other people are coming out saying that's impossible, it's still possible because I don't yeah, know I don't disagree. how a governor yeah, can say. Yeah, I don't say, disagree either. And I don't disagree it's governor, possible, but that's possible. why it was tantalizing because it was possible. Yeah. But I think the, the main point is that we need to figure out who do we trust to give us that yeah. information. And so mm -hmm. Stacey Abrams, as far as voter registration in Georgia, is somebody that we need to trust. So if, if, if these people are getting deregistered, they need to take that to Stacey Abrams and Stacey Abrams needs to let us know. Um, because she's, yeah. So if Stacey Abrams is saying this is misinformation, tap the brakes, then let's tap the brakes until they figure it out. That, but I agree with you. There's nothing bad about people checking the registration. This no. is the most important election I was say, like, for I the think decade it's not coming hurting up. Anything. Right. I, I, I agree with that. To put that story simply, it was it was just a lesson of checking your voter registration and then checking it again 
and ultimately kind of got the word out like, hey, screenshot your confirmation, take a picture of it, just so you have that backup. So while part of it may be misinformation, another part is a helpful like, okay, let me go double check real quick. It takes what, a couple of minutes to go check? Um, Cause yeah, you don't want to like go there and find out you're not registered anymore. So ultimately the benefit of it was just people getting out there to check. Well, and I think I just, also... I just, okay, yeah, I, I just wanted to, sorry, I just wanted to add there. It's a bit like, it's a bit like how it took uh, people like myself and other people to convince people to accept that Joe Biden was going to be the next president because there is a track record in Georgia from two years ago uh, where by 700,000 uh, registered voters were removed. And I understand that you were removed because they were deemed to not be living in state or passed away, et cetera. But I think it was about 70,000 people were removed um, uh, by accident. And those people couldn't vote in the, in the Georgia governor's race two years ago. So people don't have a trust for the system anymore. So it's very easy for people to believe stories like that, even if it's only anecdotal evidence um, of 10 people being removed, people literally believe that history is repeating itself two years ago and now today, just like a couple, four years ago when Hillary Clinton didn't win the election and people were shocked and took four years to get over. Well, and I think a couple of things we need to remember too is as much as I love CNN, and I will admit that all day long, they live <laughs> off of ratings, right? So they, you know, you have to take all of their stories with a grain of salt. Of course, they're going to have truth to their stories. But the fact that they were immediately covering that story kind of gave me pause of like, let's do a little bit more digging. Also, we need to realize that Mitch McConnell has made an entire history of being one of the, the smartest candidates and the smartest politicians when it comes to money. And he is hoping that they win or that the Republicans win those Senate seats because he wants to stay in power. So he is putting everything that he can behind those races too. I've been getting texts from him all day and I don't know how they got my number or why they think I'm a Republican, but whatever. So I think there are a lot of, there's a lot of noise because people are trying to create chaos when it's just a matter of check your registration, make sure you get out to vote. And if you really, if you voted for Biden and you want Biden to be able to get anything done in the next four years, we have to make sure that we flip Georgia all the way blue. And I totally agree. And what I've been seeing is some amazing people on the ground registering young people mm -hmm. and making sure that we've got that demographic of young kids that you know, are turning 18 before this next election. And there are people out there, you know, registering from cars and really doing some really wonderful work. Um, and so I'm really grateful for that. And I also think that because we are on social media, TikTok, I just will say there is a responsibility there mm -hmm. because you can't just always fall into the loophole of, you know, it's entertainment, but people are actually looking at social media as actual news these days. So it's a really important thing that we, you know, make sure that what we're saying, even if it, you know, ha can have some base to it. Absolutely. I totally agree with you, Bert. Um, but we also show another side to it as well. Absolutely. Uh, and I mean, even Van know, Jones talked about that. He <laughs> said, you know, we are the media when it comes to, you know, anybody that has any kind of platform, it is up to us to make sure that we are communicating correct information, even if it's in a funny way and a satirical way. Like it, it is our responsibility to not mislead people purposefully. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you guys, we have another person here, a wonderful guest. Um, I hope your kids went to bed well. Yes, um, we have yeah. Christina and with seven A's, seven A's. <laughs> Can you please <laughs> introduce your page and go? Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm Christina. I'm a nurse practitioner. Um, I'm on TikTok and Instagram. My um, handle is Christina NP with seven A's, exactly seven A's. Um, and I basically uh, am a COVID uh, medical education person, I guess. So I educate about COVID a lot. I address misinformation and myths that are out there. Um, I call people out um, without any shame, uh, people who are spreading um, awful BS about COVID. Um, and that's what I do. And I have a lot of fun with it. And sometimes inject a little humor in there, but you know, um, try to keep it professional. But sometimes it's hard when people really push my buttons. I have that same problem. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hi, <laughs> Katie. Welcome, Christina. We are so happy to have you. Thank um, you. Right now, I'm going to jump right into a clip about uh, Trump pardoning Flynn. Mm -hmm. 
discussion on this. Tonight, a show of presidential power undimmed by his electoral defeat. President Trump wiping out the conviction of his former national security adviser, Michael Flynn, who had pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI in the Russia investigation. The president on Twitter, it is my great honor to announce that General Michael T. Flynn has been granted a full pardon. I know you will now have a truly fantastic Thanksgiving. The president's clemency was anticipated, but still striking, as he long complained that Flynn had been mistreated by the Justice Department. We went through two and a half years of ruining people's lives, like General Flynn and many others, ruining their lives. Fired in 2017 for lying about his contact with the Russian ambassador, this year, Flynn asked to withdraw his guilty plea, and the Justice Department attempted to drop its case, but a judge had not signed off, leaving Flynn in legal peril. Separately today, President Trump used his voice to air grievance, even desperation. This election has to be turned around. The president on speakerphone, as his lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, appeared before Pennsylvania Republican state legislators to make complaints about election procedures. This was an election that we won easily. We won it by a lot. Uh, Minutes later, in Wilmington, President-elect Joe Biden offered a starkly different message. Let's be thankful for democracy itself. Biden called for unity and compassion, acknowledging the many hardships brought on by COVID this holiday season. All right, guys. God, I can't stand that. Talk to me. (laughs) Yeah, well, so I just want to say real quick about how much of a joke of a press conference that was. That was, <laughs> that was him on a phone in front of a microphone babbling mm-hmm. incoherent lies about the election. That was hilarious and pathetic. I, I just want to start <laughs> off by saying that um, that 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 um, when you accept a pardon, uh, the Supreme Court has 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 uh, indicated that that in its in and of itself is an admission of guilt. So let's just be very clear in accepting the pardon. Mike Flynn told the world. Yes, I spied for not one, but two foreign governments against the United States. I am a traitor, and Donald Trump rewarded me for it. Well, that should man, piss everybody off. The man pled guilty twice. I mean, mm-hmm. he, with, with, with the best attorney's money can buy, chose to plead guilty twice. Um, he's guilty. There's, there's no doubt about it. So. And accepting that pardon, said it the third time. It's exactly. just like recounting the votes in Georgia. I'm all for it. He just lost three times. And the like, language is he trying to make a Donald point? Trump. So I oh, no, I'm just saying, like, is he trying to like, is he trying to like set a precedent of, look, I, I, you know, pardoned him. Somebody pardoned me. Like nobody's gonna pardon you because we don't care as much about your federal crimes. We care about your state crimes. Right. Southern Who's, District of New York, maybe. So I'm hearing a lot mm-hmm. of. So there's a miss. I don't know if it's misinformation or not, but is it true that? He no longer has the ability to uh, do his Fifth Amendment rights, and he could possibly testify now against that. Trump. Is correct. Is that when actually you accept true? A pardon. If you ever are called as a witness, you cannot use your Fifth Amendment rights in because you federal the Fifth or? Amendment. The, the Fifth Amendment says that you you don't have to testify because you might. Um, Incriminate, you incriminate yourself. yourself, but because you've accepted a pardon, you've already said that yes, you are guilty. Therefore, oh, you cannot, okay. you can't incriminate yourself further, and therefore, it doesn't apply to you. So then, is the Trump administration are they really that stupid, or is Trump really that? Of stupid course, they yeah. are. To not, the to yes. not, to not know this, or like that's my like. Do they I'm really Trump not know? Doesn't that? know his middle name. <laughs> <laughs> it's genius with a J. Genius. <laughs> But another thing that I just want to touch on, the language that was being used by Donald Trump and Flynn and others was almost as though instead of giving the man a pardon, they were giving him the Presidential Medal of Freedom. It was almost like it was like it was great honor and great esteem that I give this man this great reward. And it's absolutely vile and disgusting. And of course, his base ate all that up. But everybody else should be really, really pissed off about it. Yeah. But also, it makes his obstruction of justice case against Donald Trump that much stronger. Even I mean, if you're better. pardoning, right? If you're pardoning the guy that is at the center of your obstruction of justice case, that just only strengthens it. So, I mean, he he's done himself no favors in many different ways. I think that this is just the beginning of the pardons. We're just seeing the yeah. 
like the icing is just like Flynn is the very first one, but we're going to see people paying Trump direct money, direct deposit. And he's going to be getting a lot of random people and maybe even Kyle Rittenhouse, even though if that's a state crime, he's going to, I don't know, maybe figure oh, out a way man. to get him off. Who knows? Kyle Rittenhouse, uh, Rittenhouse, whatever the guy's name is. I don't think he can it's, do that. Yeah, probably not. But he's going to be, I'm just saying, he's going to be getting everybody off. Like anybody with any money yeah. to send to Donald's way. Uh, gross. Be, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, did it last I don't think you heard do yourself it, there, Bert. <laughs> I don't think you, you get yourself, a party. Bert. You get a party. <laughs> He's going to get everyone off. It's great. I don't want yeah, Trump to be off of anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 and then, and then it was really funny when he was saying, "Like you're just a like a little guy or a little." As he sat at that little nobody. desk. Yeah. With his little hands. Yeah, he sat <laughs> in his little desk with his little hands, talking about if somebody else is a nobody. That was just great. Don't talk to the president. You're nobody way. till somebody loves you. <laughs> yeah, girl. <laughs> Whoever gave him that desk, though, oh, just chef's kiss. That was a beautiful. Oh, show. Know, it was the God. best. Like, they it was the best. A medal of freedom. But right. He got, to, he got to sit at the I kids' mean, table. What? I mean, between and that and four seasons landscaping. Is- <laughs> <laughs> just it's his insane, staff is just it's top also notch really sad like we are an international joke and yeah, you know yeah. what? honestly i feel like we have had it coming because america has been touting this we are the best we are the best we are the best but we are just the best bullies right so i think that the fact that like literally the veil has been lifted from everything and now we have to be like maybe we should like dial it back be a little bit more humble and actually care about other people once we get this clown out of office and his tiny hands go with him y'all y'all well, spark these songs with every word y'all say he had it coming <laughs> yes he had it coming <laughs> i just uh-huh. i just wanted to add there that, that joe biden is starting to tweet about how you know, they're going to unite the world and, and, you know, lead the world to change and all of that. But let's be very clear. The rest of the world doesn't want your leadership anymore. No. You can get your own house in order and you can come be part of the team. But the last four years showed us that we don't need your leadership. We don't need it at all. And we don't want it because your house, 80 million people voted for Biden, 73 million people voted for Trump and 80 million people didn't bother their arse at all. So sort your own house out and then come be part of the team. But don't think you're just going to get rid of Donald Trump and come in with with a big cape and save the day. It's not welcome. Yeah, even though Biden won, I kind of feel like we're still in the minority because you have the 80 million people who didn't vote, who should have voted. You have the 73 million people who voted for Trump. So I feel like we're still outnumbered in some weird way by like people who just don't but care Trump about the- treated the world like a a lot of people have thought for years, you know, ever since World War II, um, I think the American psyche has had, well, we paid for everything. We were the ones that won the war. It didn't matter that, you know, you had all sorts of other people that were fighting and more Russians died than anybody else fighting the Nazis. And But we've had this attitude, like, if it were not for us, y'all would be nothing. Mm-hmm. And that's not true. That's but tr- a so lot ego. of people have felt that way. And we, I mean, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, that they need to pay us back and all this kind of stuff. Well, honey, we were fighting for ourselves, too. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and just on a, on a selfish note. Ireland um, has had, you know, you know, conflict and terrorism, oh, you know, God, for yeah. as long as I've been alive, and trouble in the north of Ireland, um, and bombings and terrorism, the IRA and all of that, that was all sorted in 1998 uh, with a with the Good Friday peace agreement, the peace deal. But Donald Trump put that at jeopardy because of his lust for a trade deal with the UK to dismantle the NHS, and that really put significant strain on the border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. Yep. And we were really fearful that we were going to return to the sectarianism and the violence and bombings in London and Manchester and Derry and Dublin, all because Donald Trump wanted economic gains for himself and didn't really understand the socio-political scenario in the region of Ireland. And that's just one tiny example of how Donald Trump pretty much shot all over the map of the world. I think but that is isn't, a uh, great isn't, point. Like there are ripple effects to what Trump does, pulling out of the Iran deal, pull, pulling out of the Paris Accord, um, all these other things. There are ripple effects that we don't necessarily see because we're in our own little USA bubble. 
But uh, the things he's done, like Patty has said, have ripple effects throughout the throughout the world. And yeah, I think they're kind of sick of our leadership at this point. Well, and this mess today where they killed the guy in Iran, you know, mm -hmm. it was probably and I have no way of knowing this, but a lot of people think that, you know, Israel had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm Jewish, so I can say whatever I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> but Netanyahu has been up Trump's butt for the last four years. And, Ugh. you know, Netanyahu is a power hungry piece of poop, just like Trump. And American Jews don't like him, I can assure you. And we're not Zionist and we're not going to, I'm not going to take Israel over being an American. You know, I hadn't, I don't know anybody over there and I'm sure not going. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I just wanted to add to that. Um, and I spoke to, about this today. I have absolutely no doubt it was Israel that was behind this assassination. Yeah. But the, if you look at the last few months, the, the normalization of diplomacy between Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates, and it's all just to consolidate the Israeli power and, and bloc in the region. And of course, Israel have always had a problem with Iran. That's what it's always been about. And that's why the USA have just sold you know, millions of dollars worth of missiles to the UAE to make sure that they sign those agreements with Israel. And it's a, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And now because mm -hmm. of that, a scientist was assassinated today. And now there's a fleet of destroyer ships moving into the Gulf um, because Donald Trump needs to try and protect the region all of a sudden. And now everything just got a little bit more tense because there's too many egos and too many tiny penises. Honey, he probably gave not Netanyahu the okay to kill the guy because yeah, it probably. was just two weeks ago that Donald Trump was trying to strike Iran and his military men said, no, baby, you don't want to do that. It'll start a World War III. That's I wonder how, how many stupid things, he is. I wonder how many things, along with what Amanda was saying, I wonder how many things Trump has wanted to do where the generals have just said no. I mean, seriously, I bet a they lot. have said no. A lot. Well, just think about him taking those two, you know, the planes out of the air that goes and flies over and takes the pictures oh, of that's Russia. Oh, deal. Yeah. You the know, open what skies in the treaty. name of God? Mm -hmm. The Open his Skies Treaty. Exactly. His generals just scold him like he's a child. Like, no, you're not doing that. <laughs> you're not doing that today, Donald. But I want to bomb Iran. <laughs> yeah, but I want but to. But I want to, Daddy. I want you, to. You, I think you can he's, imagine. He's... Bart he is so desperate to, to have some kind of legacy other than because he really genuinely thinks himself as a wartime president. And he thought that, oh, coronavirus makes me a wartime president. But he completely shit the bet on that. So now <laughs> he is like, well, what can I do that makes me like the hero on the way out? But everything he touches turns not to gold, but to garbage. And it's just it blows my mind. Like the further the more and more he tries, it's like it just gets worse and worse and worse. And he needs to just see himself out. Like it would do him more favors to just stop while he's ahead and conceive <laughs> peacefully and leave. I know he never will, but it's like, you know, like the, he is, he is destroying his legacy and I'm kind of here for it because I hate him, but I'm also just really done with having him having space in my brain rent free. <laughs> and, it, and it's well, oxymoronic because or, he's, he's oh. destroying his legacy, but in his mind, He's creating. So he needs to make sure that everybody uh -huh. is saying, oh, make sure that everybody knows that I got the vaccine, not by make sure that everybody knows that I brought the troops home uh, at the week before inauguration and not by now okay. it's I attacked Iran. I'm the, sa I'm the savior of the Middle East, you know, not by. So he thinks he's protecting his legacy. And in reality, he's, he's figuratively blowing it up. But again, so again, I can imagine him in the Oval Office with just walking around with a big red button going, can I push the button yet, please? <laughs> I'm so desperate to push this button, please. I want to push the red button more than I want to sleep with my own daughter. Do you think they gave him a fake button? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say, tell me it's a fake button. They not gave him one of those buttons the from button. the office. Like. So, Gerardo Rivera, he said that we should name the oh. vaccine oh. after Trump. I think, I think we can name the vaccine and the disease after Trump. We can say the Trump flu and whatever. To get rid of the Trump flu, you got to take this Trump vaccine. I think that's I'm fine. I'm not putting Trump inside of me at all, ever. <laughs> there will never be a, a Trump in me. I stand okay. my ground. You're, you're not going to make the Baron joke? 
Oh. Well, I mean, I, I could make the Baron joke, but... No, you know, don't talk about it. He's a kid. I'd be arrested. <laughs> All right. Well, Trump Trump was a kid oh, wow. also 60 years ago. He is a child. Oh, my. Oh my. He needs oh my. to be spanked. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, so speaking of kids... Yeah, can, can, can I just ask Christina? Can I ask Christina? Just yeah. what do you think in terms of Donald Trump trying to take credit for this for this vaccine and trying to push it and... Geraldo is trying to say, oh, we should call it the Trump vaccine or, you know, it should be a little orange pill. What, like what you're on the front lines. What do you think? Uh, you could probably guess what I think about that. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I don't think any he doesn't deserve any credit for anything good or anything positive that's coming out of this pandemic. Zero. Right. Like he has he deserves zero credit. He's the, he is the absolute epitome of a failure when it comes to this pandemic and how he's managed it. So I think you know how I feel about that. Yeah, it's like, I mean, <laughs> I want to use Christina's videos as replies to all my comments. Like all these people that comment on my videos, I just want to say, what? just send Christina's them video. my way. Yes. I'm down with it. Yeah, I try to just, I try to tag you in videos now where people are fighting me with coronavirus. Like, just you handle it. Yeah, just because they're not going to come fight my battles, Christina. Yeah. <laughs> all right, you guys, I'm going to pivot for a second. And you know, speaking of children, I'm going to show a clip of uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, and I do want to talk about this and what. Uh. Yeah. This morning, the teen charged with killing two men in Wisconsin during the Jacob Blake protests is out of jail. Kyle Rittenhouse posted $2 million bail Friday, coming up with the money with the help of my pillow founder and Trump supporter Michael Lindell and former Silver Spoons actor Ricky Schroeder. Schroeder even posing for a photo with Rittenhouse after his release. Rittenhouse still faces numerous charges, including first degree homicide. He claims he was acting in self defense. So All I right. want to start with this one because I have a controversial take on it. So I think that there, this is very multifaceted, right? Like I think uh, that uh, he uh, has uh. had a lot of very poor influences on his life. Uh. Um, I also think that the fact that he lacks a frontal lobe had a lot to play into this. <laughs> I think the uh. fact that he had easy access to weapons had an e like, and the fact that he was white had the most to do with it. I don't know how I feel about him being tried as an adult. I think that it is appropriate. And I think that if that is where the courts want to go, that's fine. But I also think he is a child. And I don't He's know. 17 how... years old. Yes, mm -hmm. but I, I mean, I think of myself at 17 and I think of myself at 34. And I, I mean, I didn't kill anyone at 17, but like I was a very, very different person. And I almost wonder. You know, but you knew not to kill know. somebody at 17. It's true. No, that's you're absolutely right. And I feel like this is where I am conflicted about this whole situation. Honey, this is it what is we've done in America of, is we've let people off and mm -hmm. go, oh well, you know, it's they couldn't help. No. He's 17 years old. I mean, I'm I not saying he couldn't help it. Yeah. When I was 17 years old, I knew not to go kill people. So, so just to be clear, I am not excusing. I am not now, what's at all. This about do, not, do not take load. that as me. I'm not excusing what he did at all. I just, I think that but other we all have need to take to be... personal responsibility. Absolutely, and I think the people that have so poorly influenced him need to be held responsible as well. Like, why have his parents not been brought into this? You know, yeah, who, she drove his mother, him. His his mom mother is drove him. There, right? His mother drove him. Drove his him, mother did. dropped him off. Yes. And the police officers that just saw him walking with this huge weapon and gave him water after other people are yelling and screaming, he just killed someone. You know, where are the other people? I feel like he shouldn't be the only one held responsible for what happened. I think that's where my conflict is. So 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 there's clearly a failure and a and a chain chain reaction here. But when it comes to whether he should be tried as an adult or not, the key word here is just intent. Did he intend mm -hmm. to go from his house to the scene to use lethal force in any way, shape, or form? And the evidence that's available certainly looks that way, but I'm also conscious of mm -hmm. not trialing him in the public eye. But if they can prove intent in any way, shape, or form, he's going to be tried as an adult. And um, if they can prove intent, he will be he will be. I mean, um, the intent was he drove 200 miles. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the intent. Yeah. To protect property that wasn't his. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah, he, true. He, why property would that he didn't go even own. 
Uh, right. Why would you go to another state and get involved in something that had nothing to do with you if you didn't intend to do something? It makes no sense. It's I mean, just, just like when I go to a I restaurant don't... and parents won't make their children behave. You know, it's like, why dear God, I'm not. Well, she should be. Why yeah. didn't his dad and mom go with him and like actually stay with him and monitor the situation? If you're going to go protect people and stuff, you should probably bring your dad because you're only 17 years old. You go in there with a gun, you're just getting dropped off by your mom like it's a wasn't, youth camp. Wasn't his mom doing something else involved in that kind of? I mean, they're all involved in that malicious stuff. His mom, yeah, because his she's dad. like a crazy gun person too. Oh yeah, and then she went to Wisconsin to yeah. a GOP fundraiser, and they gave her a standing ovation for yeah, carrying yeah, yeah. him to Wisconsin. What is wrong with these people? That's the one and, thing. I mean, that, when she says it's multifaceted, oh, go ahead, Bert. I've, I've talked enough. There ain't no multifaceted to it. He's a killer. I just can't believe it's the my yeah. pillow guy that is getting him. Uh, we have the my pillow guy. We have the my pillow guy and giving old us actor. all the information about the coronavirus in the very beginning, and then the my pillow guy also goes to get Kyle Rittenhouse out, and then it's just a nonstop endless of a drama. Like you can't make this stuff up, honestly. My pillow if, guy is in the news if, again. If my pillow guy and Ricky Schroeder or Rick Schroeder are your go-to people right now, your life sucks. Your life is awesome. <laughs> well, I you know, got the pillow, you know, I know the man that turned Ricky Schroeder because Ricky Schroeder was in um, a flick with John Voight. And I love John Voight. He's wonderful to me, but he's a political crazy man. And, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, but when I'm with him, I mean, he's he's fabulous. But we don't talk about politics. But anybody that raised Angelia Jolie, they something wrong with him, honey. Can you ask? Can you ask him why he chose to be in the movie Anaconda? I need to know the answer to this question. <laughs> Cause they money. paid him money. Oh, money. God, he was can awful. I, um, can I? Can I, can I just? Can I have to interject. If I was ever asked to be in a movie with Jennifer Lopez, I would hop on that. Whoa! Well, so, whoa! <laughs> Can I, can I can I can I just come back a second? Because there was there was a congressman who posted I can't remember his name, but he posted two tweets and he and uh, he was talking about Kyle Rittenhouse for Congress. Yeah. Oh, and Jesus. there was there was there was a, somebody put up a tweet, it was like, I'd love to live in an America where Colin Kaepernick is not villainized and um Kyle Rittenhouse is not nominated for Congress. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's the world that America is living in right now, whereby one side believes that a murderer, in my opinion, a murderer should be a public representative and a guy who tried to draw attention to something that was plain to see, but we were blind to it, is the most villainized man in the last five years in America. Like, what yeah. the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, that's the point yeah. I was going to make about it being multifaceted is that not just that his trial and his upbringing and the other people that might be responsible, like his parents, that's one thing. But just the heroification, like they yeah. idolize this person now. That's an issue. Like 30% of the population idolizes this 17 year old kid that went to a protest with a gun and shot people. Yeah, you think like 73 mm -hmm. million people, 73 million people at least look at this kid as as their victor, as their hero. And it's I'm like he it's murdered that. two people. I have oh, I have something to say. Have you, people... guys, have you guys seen uh, if anything should happen? I love you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm a Tell mom. Us about it, Maggie. No, I, I mean, I. The thing is, it's actually, a, it's kind of a TikTok trend right now to watch the movie. But beforehand, before you watch the movie, take a, sh a shot of yourself and then watch <laughs> the movie, and then afterwards. Because no, I mean, it's just a thing they're doing. I watched it, and um, safe to say, it's pretty much all about school shootings. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And you know, Kyle Rittenhouse. This whole thing has that that vibe. Yeah. written all over it. I think we can all agree. Um, honestly, there's nothing more terrifying to me than this whole sensationalizing men with guns and being a proud boy and going to schools or going places with your going places with your guns. Like it is seriously terrifying as a mother. I don't want to send my kid to school because it, it's terrifying to me. Um, 
But I implore you, go watch the movie. It's really, really powerful. Right. Like, imagine glorifying the Columbine shooters as heroes. Oh, no. You know, like, that's kind of how, I mean, that's what Kyle Rittenhouse is. He wasn't in school, probably because of COVID, right? So, God only knows, he might have shot up his school at some point. Uh, but it's it's almost like you are giving a hero title to someone like the kids who shot up Columbine. Or the kids who shot those 26 elementary school you know, people the or the kid, guy, who, yeah. yeah, the guy who went into the movie theater and shot 12 people like those are villains. But then somehow Kyle Rittenhouse is a hero. I don't the guy, it. the guy that really made Kyle Rittenhouse a hero is 100 percent Tucker Carlson, which is oh. the oh, yeah. biggest hypocrite yes. in Fox News, I would say. But not just a hypocrite, but he is making Kyle Rittenhouse seem like he's such a good guy. And he he's just egging on for this kind of behavior to happen again, like a 17 or 16 year old to go out with a gun again, like this is okay. And Tucker Carlson is encouraging this behavior. Like that should never have been aired. I just like, have ever. one thing to say. Anybody here buys one of them darn pillows, you're <laughs> going to hear something from me. <laughs> I don't want uh, and, I, and, I, and I just wanted to add there, just because something Maggie said there, in Ireland, there's not a single child who goes to school every day worried that um, a gunman is going to come into the school. Not a single child any day goes to school worrying about a mass shooting or guns being used to threaten their lives. Yeah, so my, just, my, daughter, my daughter was set to start kindergarten this year. And a huge part of you know that experience is that they start doing drills, yeah. Yeah. active shooter drills. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. And uh -uh. I, for me as a mom, it is beyond terrifying that that's, I mean, I know back in the day people had to do bombing drills and whatnot, but mm -hmm. this is the board. If you know what an active shooter drill is like, you have to close the door, lock the door and push furniture up against the door. And everyone has to go hide. Mm -hmm. Not some kind of, this is not what reality should be in our country. I had the same training and job. Like, I mean, I know it's, it's worse with kids, obviously, but like even our, employment places are doing the same training. It's like, here's what happens. You run. Like that's what they told us to do in one of our training classes, uh, run and try to fight him. Like what? Like, uh -uh. But, but for children, it's like, this is what children are having to get trained on in class. I remember in California, the, the worst thing we ever had training on is earthquake drills. Like hide under your desk. You're going to be saved from an earthquake. Uh -huh. <laughs> but like now it's, you know, shove furniture against your door in case someone is in your hallway shooting up your teachers and your fellow students. Like that's terrifying. That's I think it's interesting how... when you, I think it's interesting when you make the juxtaposition of people that are okay with uh, school shooting preparation, all those yeah. mass shooting preparation at school, and they're not okay with masks. Like you're okay with this right. preparation, people yeah. getting, <laughs> they're your kids getting shot up at school, but you're not okay with the safety preparation of just mm -hmm. wearing a freaking yeah. mask to Walmart. Exactly. You know, well, it's, I can't straight that We've it's got a, schools that have, they have metal detectors. We have these active shooter drills. Yep. Christine, I know you're a mom too. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, my, my kids are still so little, they're only two and four, so I haven't really thought about all of that yet, but my sister's a teacher, and so I've heard from her over the years about how this has impacted how she manages her classroom. I mean, it's I mean, it's awful. I feel the same way as you do, Maggie. It's like, it's it's not the way it should be. Kids should not have to think about yeah. that. They should feel safe in their schools. And it's becoming a money-making operation, so there was a comment just there about, about school bags. When you're more worried about how bulletproof your child's backpack is rather than the quality of the books that are in the backpack, then that's a massive problem that you guys yeah. have. And that's only going to get worse because, as we know in America, greed trumps everything. Oh, yep. yeah. Honey, there's still Unintended. people that don't believe that the student, <laughs> students at the uh, elementary school is and, even Sandy real. Hook. Sandy Hook. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's Alex Sandy Jones. Yeah. Alex oh. Jones. Then a couple well, there's some him. people, there's some so people that are dying. There's some people that are dying for COVID and they still don't even believe that COVID is even real. I don't know if Christina has ever seen this before, but I mean, this is happening in some places like North Dakota and South Dakota. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Christina, what do you think about these people well, that are hold still on real quick. I think that's a perfect segue to start talking about COVID because Christina is our COVID expert and I want to show a little clip real quick. <laughs> and let's get into this because I'm coming home for the holidays and also COVID.
<laughs> so let's talk. We're going to begin with the breaking news. With millions of Americans on the move tonight, health experts worry what is usually one of the country's biggest nights for travel may also become one of its most dangerous. As we come on the air tonight, one doctor is warning Thanksgiving will become the mother of all super spreader events as people let down their guard and their masks. But even before Americans gather around the table tomorrow, the rate of new cases of coronavirus is growing astronomically tonight. 2.3 million people have been infected nationwide in just the past two weeks. And more than 2,000 have been reported dead in the past 24 hours. That's the highest single-day death toll in more than six months. Late today, President-elect Joe Biden called on weary Americans to wear masks and not surrender to fatigue, saying, we are at war with the virus, not with each other. So there is a lot of new reporting for you and your family tonight, including the latest holiday forecast, and our team is standing by to cover it all. CBS's Chris Van Cleve is going to lead us off tonight from Reagan National Airport. Good evening, Chris. Margaret, we hit a pandemic high at airport checkpoints like the one behind me here on Sunday. Since then, Monday and Tuesday, those numbers have ticked down a bit, but the expectation is still up to 50 million Americans will take to the roads or the skies to travel for Thanksgiving. And that is exactly what the CDC is urging people not to do. Some of the longest lines of the pandemic at Seattle's airport, a sign of Americans on the move tonight, despite blunt warnings from public health officials again pleading for people to stay home this Thanksgiving. By making that sacrifice, you're going to be prevent people from getting infected. But millions are going anyway. Romeo Garcia left Maryland this afternoon for his parents in Greenville, North Carolina. The holidays are really the only times where I could be able to see my family. Do you worry at all about bringing the coronavirus home with you? Not at all. I've been tested. I'm negative. But that wasn't enough for Tom Wilson. He made the agonizing decision not to spend Thanksgiving with his family. It just seemed like a, um, a risk that wasn't worth taking. Trying to stop out of control spread, there's a growing patchwork of restrictions in cities and states. 14 states in Washington, D.C. call for mandatory testing or of quarantine requirements for travelers. New York City police are setting up checkpoints at bridges and tunnels, and Maryland state troopers are checking if bars and restaurants are following the rules. A stay-at-home advisory is now in place in Pennsylvania, and tonight, a Thanksgiving booze ban at bars and restaurants. In L.A., outdoor dining shuts down tonight. From coast to coast, governors and mayors are practically begging people not to gather. Don't make it harder on those uh, frontline workers. To act like it's a normal Thanksgiving is to deny reality. We are extremely concerned about Thanksgiving weekend becoming a super spreader event. Small gatherings are now a major driver of the virus spread. Now I'm in the hospital and can't see my family. 15 members of a Texas family contracted COVID at a birthday lunch. They made this emotional plea. Please don't be like my family and ignore the CDC guidelines. But relief for a COVID weary nation could be just months away. Operation Warp Speed expects up to 110 million Americans, one third of the country, to be vaccinated by February. Now, the U.S. population as a whole uh, should be covered in terms of vaccine doses available somewhere between the month of May and the month of December. Help cannot come soon enough for millions struggling to find enough to eat. A familiar scene played out in Houston, a long line of cars picking up food for the holiday, thankful just to have a meal. And flyers arriving in Los Angeles tonight are being greeted with it. All right, guys. Christina, you are so up on this one. Um, what Bert was saying was, his question was earlier about people not believing that this is real. I know you probably deal with this every day on yep, your page, right? Pretty much. I mean, it's, it's just, I can't, I just can't like fathom it. I just can't understand the denial that people embrace what kind of what kind of existence is that to just like look at something that is so obvious um facts science evidence data that is just screaming it at you and what it takes to just willfully look away from that like i just can't understand it 
I can't. I can't get it. I don't understand. Do you, do you think it's is it, is it like a this? politicized thing, though? Right? I mean, people will just politicize the virus. Like, I, it's, I mean, is it I, because, like, I don't want to believe it because I'm a Republican, but you Democrats no, can believe Trump it. Trump said it was fake. I mean, yeah, I think that's a big part of it. never going to believe it's true. Right. right. I think that's a big part of it. I mean, I, I don't know if we can, you know, narrow it down to just one sort of ideology or one cause that kind of perpetuated that. But Trump definitely made it worse. I don't think it doesn't need to be political, obviously, but it's become political. Right. I think people are like naturally people will be um, afraid of things that they don't understand or are drawn away from things that they are feel unfamiliar with or uncomfortable with. So naturally, I think this feels so new and scary. People are going to want to deny it or move away from it. But it's kind of exploded into this own like entity. It's kind of nutty. It's bizarre. But don't you think <laughs> we're just a spoiled, rotten society and we want what we want, regardless of what it does to anybody else? That's mm -hmm. it. Such mm -hmm. an individualistic society. Mm -hmm. I think that's reflected not only, I think that we've always known that as Americans, mm -hmm. but I think COVID has just like brought that so clear that this individualistic sort of way of, of living, which I think people think has what is, has what led America to be so successful historically uh, is clearly our downfall right now. Yeah. So I, 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 I think agree. there's a couple of things. There's two things at play here. Really. There's like psychological rigidity where people are so afraid and psychologically fragile that they're afraid to accept the reality, so they change their own reality to create a, a better set of circumstances for themselves. So they're in denial, really. But the second thing, and I'm the one who always says it, a lot of Americans are stupid. You're dumb as a box of rocks. I'm really sorry to say it. But not but us. When, not, when, us. When, not us, but, but, and I'm not even American. I'm Irish, so I'm okay. yeah, but, but a lot of Americans are just plain old ordinary stupid, yes. and they're afraid of what they don't understand so they're also in denial, but mm -hmm. let's not like stop giving them excuses, you know, for for rejecting Corona. They're just fucking stupid. I'm sorry, <laughs> you have to see it. It's and he can get away years. with saying that because he says it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a little hat. I mean, I'm not I, I agree that it's the education component. We have people that are completely misinformed and people that are ignorant willfully ignorant and purposely ignorant but we are i mean what else can we do there is one Nothing. good thing about this year grandma don't have to worry about getting run over by a reindeer we just have to worry about little johnny bringing home the corona <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 2020 I think it's interesting <laughs> I think it's interesting. So I go to, you know, like the higher end grocery store sometimes and I'll see like there are more maskless people there yeah. because I think it is a willful ignorance, but it's also an entitlement, right? Of mm -hmm, that won't mm -hmm. affect me because I mm -hmm. live in an echelon where things don't affect me. Yet you go to not lower end, but more, you know, stream, you know, run in the mill grocery store and you see every single person in there with a mask on because they know if they get coronavirus, their family can't eat, their kids won't be taken care of. Like they, whether or not they believe it or not, like they're just, they just accept that they, they might as well just wear a mask just in case. Like it, it, I think that divide is what's scarier in this country. The wealth gap in this country yeah. is what is getting so much wider and what is what is genuinely terrifying. I agree. Yeah. Don't Don't give him Trump. An excuse. But if you yeah. look at her media diet, as far as Fox News and then, oh, my God, OAN mm -hmm. or Newsmax or uh, some of these websites, they don't hear that it's real. They hear uh, that uh, it's that it's a hoax. They hear that masks don't work. That is what they hear mm -hmm. all day, every day. So I, I've and even got a cousin at the nurse. The and she's talking about how masks are tyranny. And I'm like, you're mm -hmm. a nurse. What's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. So it's not an excuse yeah. for them. But their entire universe, their whole media diet is telling them mm -hmm. that it's not as bad as we're saying it is. Right. I think what frustrates and that, and that, me. Well, real quick, Jonathan, your post about this, I thought spoke volumes because you posted about what does it look like on Fox right before Thanksgiving? And the words coming out of those people's mouths was so <laughs> I thought it was a joke. It, I mean, they made I thought like- it was a joke. They made yeah. death yeah. jokes. They, I mean, it was so yeah. bad. So, so when that's your entire media diet, yeah. when the people that you go to for news are saying it's a joke, mm -hmm. how do you take it seriously? And the people that you don't like are taking it seriously. So again, we get into confirmation bias. So, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm just, I'm just what this way, was, honey, if they don't wear one, it'll be just one less vote. But that infects yeah. us, though. It, yeah. it, they're wearing a mask to keep us safe. 
But and just just what Danielle was saying there about in terms of class divide and entitlement, no better example than Donald Trump himself, who yep. coronavirus was no big deal, and then he got coronavirus, and then it wasn't a big deal because he got millions of dollars worth of health care free of charge that the taxpayers paid for, and he walked away a couple of days later said, I'm I'm immune. God must have given me COVID so that I could show you how easy it is to defeat. <laughs> Like he, he said those words, and oh. that just tells all of the rich people in America, don't worry about it. And it tells all of the poor people, well, if the president can survive it, and God is with me, therefore and I'm fine. he was hyped up on steroids. They took, yes. he, he took tell that, that stupid pill that was sounds like it was a movie. Regeneron. Medicine. Yeah, Regeneron. <laughs> like, it doesn't made even sound with, real. Made with abortion material, baby. I'm like, it's, it sounds like Unobtainium <laughs> from Avatar. Like, it's the stupidest name. For like a medicine, reach out. Well, I really, I loved how they did those commercials afterwards on TikTok. Like Regeneron, it can do anything or whatever. <laughs> they did like the commercials that were really funny, like the infomercials, like someone selling a plunger. I mean, they did the commercial <laughs> for, of the plunger for Trump. That was the best I thought. But the Regeneron infomercial was also good too. It almost sounds like if you get your arm sliced off, it like you take this pill and your arm regenerates. That's kind of what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is a little Christina, I recognized the steroid thing. As y'all well know, I have a, a 91 year old aunt that I've been, um, you know, she lives with me. I've been taking care of her. Um, for a long time, uh, I had her sister, my other aunt, and her husband. They were all three on steroids at once. And one day they're happy as a lark. The next day they're mad as a wasp. And I mean, it was like I was ready to pull my hair out by the time all three of them got off of steroids. I was like, <laughs> you never knew what they were going to be or who they were going to be. Yep. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. I wanted to ask Christina about the vaccines, like as far as people taking them and how mm -hmm. safe they think they are. And how, what, just ballpark, what do you think percentage of people are going to be willing to take this vaccine to line up first to take Well, this it? is the problem, right? I mean, in that news clip you play, Maggie, I mean, it's like, yeah, once we get all these vaccines available, we're all going to be fine. But we're not because a huge chunk of this country thinks that this vaccine is either going to microchip them or is going to place a tracker in them or is going to cause some long term oh. issues. I mean, the, the kind of shit that people are coming up with, it's like it's really creative. Like they actually have to like think about this shit, and come up with this creative. Am I allowed to curse? Yeah, well. Yeah, but today. Yeah, did. yeah, you're fine. Okay. No, 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 no. Fuck, fuck it. It's okay. <laughs> we're not. We're not. You have to do it in accent channel. like Patty, though. Happy we're, Jesus. We're not in, <laughs> we're not in any oh, okay. monetized channels, okay, so we're good. not going to get. So we're not going to get dinged accent. for that. So you I mean, say no. fucking. <laughs> yeah, exactly with the accent. But I mean, ultimately, the vaccine is only going to be as good as people who are willing to take it. So yeah, like frontline workers, I think we're going to be a priority. Higher risk group will be a priority. Then you're going to run into all these like healthcare workers who are already on TikTok who are saying they're not going to take the vaccine. And I don't care if I lose my job. Like how freaking irresponsible can people be that they'll refuse to take it when they're nurses? Like, but this is when I go back to like it being politicized. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you I'm, don't trust I'm not going to take it because, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or I'm going to take it because of blah, blah, blah. It's like if it has Trump's name slapped on it, I'll take it. If it doesn't have Trump's name, I'm not going to take it. Right. It's like, I just want to know: is it a safe thing to take? Yeah. I mean, if as far I as, take as far it, as far like, as we know, all three of the ones that are probably going to come to market soon appear to be safe. Obviously, we don't have long-term data, but most vaccines, if they're going to have problems, are going to be in the immediate anyway. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be like long-term yeah. down the road. So. Right. Um, and also with the mRNA vaccine, so messenger RNA is net, is really unstable. So once it does its job, like it's gone, it's eliminated from your body. It's not going to hang around at all. So really, I don't see any, I mean, I don't see any long-term issues that these could have. Is it a yearly thing or is it like, like the yes. flu virus? Or we I don't, don't think we know. I don't think um, we know yet. That's well, the problem they, is we don't know enough about this, this virus to know if it has seasonality like the flu. Like we just don't know enough about it. And this is what I keep saying on my page. It's like, everyone's like, why do, well, back in March they said this and now they say that. I'm like, do y'all not realize that's how science works and that like, you know, we just don't know anything about it. So <laughs> like- isn't know. it funny? Isn't it funny the amount of people that have come out who are suddenly doctors? Yeah, like this my <laughs> guy who bagged my groceries. He's suddenly listen. Like, and, <laughs> well, when you have a radiologist over the coronavirus thing at the White House, what yep. do you expect? I know, I know. <laughs> it's Atlas. really Fucking sad. Atlas. Every guy you went to high school with on Facebook yeah. is yeah. on that's this. That's the reason they, I never yeah. get on Facebook. Right, and but that's then, the thing. Also, sorry, sorry. Last night, then Donald Trump to the troops abroad 
was saying how next week, Christina, you're going to have the vaccine. It's going to be rolled out as of next week. And it's uh, what he said next week or the week after. And Donald Trump with his usual in two weeks sign argument. But he's telling (laughs) troops abroad and telling the people of America next week, Christina, you're going to have the vaccine. So we're going to see if you die or not. Hold on, thanks a million for that. Not like, gonna happen. Like, absolute bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Like, what is what is his goal? Is he saying this like? Does he think he's still gonna win the election somehow because he, he pushed the think. vaccine, or is it like, oh, I gotta? It's have, just to make him feel good. Yeah, he's I think whatever is on the top of his head narcissist, at the and that's what a narcissist does. That's exactly. He right. inflates his ego and he makes himself relevant and always doing the best thing. He right. can do no wrong. Right. That's what a narcissist does. Um, Christina, I have a question for you. Since we just finished having our lovely holiday of Thanksgiving or, you know, Indigenous People's Day, whatever, you know, you want to call it, um, what do you think the trajectory of this virus is going to be right now? Mm. Well, thanks for giving me permission to curse because we are fucked. <laughs> Guys, we are so screwed. So even if like not as many people travel this Thanksgiving that normally do on previous Thanksgivings. So the issue is not like, I don't think, I don't think the risk is like on an airplane. I don't think the risk is like in route. The risk, like the news report said, is like in home gatherings are where Mm -hmm. the most cases are coming from. So, you know, Jimmy from college and grandma from down the street are all coming over. No one's wearing masks. Everyone's loud, drinking, eating. Like that is the prime way that COVID is going to spread. And we know asymptomatic and pre-symptomatic spread is significant. So I predict that two weeks from now, when incubation periods tend to be up to two weeks, we're going to have a big spike in hospitalizations uh, in cases. And then two weeks after that, we're going to have a big spike in hospitalizations. And then two weeks after that, we're going to have a huge spike in deaths. Well, Considering then, we're at a peak like, right now, that is terrifying. Yep. What do you, why what do you, what do you we say as Americans people... make such a big deal about this? It wasn't even a federal holiday until 1946. Because it's tradition, right? Well, yeah, but tradition. I love Thanksgiving. What do you, what do you say to dressing. people, though? Like, so, okay, let's say this creates this massive influx, which it's going to. Like, but we, we get this information before Christmas, and because that's another big holiday. People travel, people eat dinners and all that. Are people going to look at what happened in the past few no. weeks? Or no. the uh-uh. weeks leading up to Christmas? They're going to do it oh, anyway. Or are no. they going to do it anyway? Yeah, they're going to no. do it regardless. They're going to say, yeah. screw. And like- I bet you there's going to be New Year's Eve celebrations right, right. after that. Like, I right. mean, that's why we're so fucked. And this is what people don't get when they're like, you know how many people say in my, on my comments, like, oh, you know, hospitals aren't full. I walked into a hospital and it wasn't busy at all. I'm like, right. But hospitals are That's full because, because they won't allow people to come see you when you're yeah. there. Exactly. But like the issue is that people who are hospitalized with COVID, they tend to be hospitalized for a long time. Like it's not just a quick, like two days you're in, you're out. You're in there for right. weeks and weeks and weeks. So that's why there's no beds because these people get sick. They get sick as hell and they never leave the hospital or they die, you know? So yeah. it's not good guys. We're screwed. Just stay yeah, home. I mean, it's like year. I was, I was in the hospital for a day because of a kidney problem and I was put in the children's ward. <laughs> because they had no rooms anywhere else, but it lo- it did look desolate there. But that's because you can't have anyone in there. Yes, there was yes. a kid. There was this guy, I think, a room over who tested positive for COVID while he was in the children's ward with me, and they for some reason called his mom on speakerphone, and we all heard this. And they're like, "I'm sorry, you can't come and see him, but he tested positive for COVID," and you heard her just like break down and go insane, like. But like, why are you putting that on speakerphone? First of all, like, Jesus. and you picked up your little pee bag and started running, right? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'm like, okay, I'm like, am I safe? I was a room over from him, like, <laughs> a, a lot of a lot of the rationale, a lot of the rationale has been, oh, it's 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 okay because it's family. It's okay. It should be fine because it's just family. Don't worry about it. But the reality is, it's it's mostly family. Who give it to the rest yes. of the family? Yeah, like it's it's that cocoon is the most dangerous and toxic environment, just because people say, "Oh well, I trust X, Y, or Z because we're family." Right. Well, unfortunately, that's that's terrible. And I posted a video about this today. I really hope that in two weeks' time, people don't just think that regret is a is like people realize that regret is not just a word. You know what right. I mean? Like because they're going to be going to funerals at Christmas instead of mm-hmm. um, having a, having a holiday. Honey, that- stupidity is going to kick in and you know they it's i don't understand i mean you can have thanksgiving next july Mm -hmm. you know it doesn't have to be in november it's just just a day to eat and you can make that darn dressing at home yourself yep not like my mama you guys there's a better learn honey because she ain't gonna be alive forever 
Well, that's somber. There is a uh, <laughs> pretty pretty well known TikToker. Her name is Rebel Pell. I don't know if anyone follows her. Yeah. But she should. She's phenomenal. Um, and she's a political TikToker. And she did a whole uh, a post a couple days ago about how she went and got tested before Thanksgiving, and it came back negative. But she wasn't feeling good. And she was like, oh, well, maybe. But my test says negative. And mm -mm. now she's like, she's coming out. She's like, I'm convinced I have COVID. Um, and I know that that happens a lot with people. And people are not, uh, Christine, I'm sure you can attest to this. People are, you know, getting tested. But the test results, you know, maybe they're not quarantining for X amount of time afterwards. Or it's just false negatives. Mm -hmm. What can you say to that? Yeah, this this is the this is a problem with the way our testing is right now. So I actually did a post about this recently because there was an article um, that was published in a um, uh, I forget where it was published, but it was a, describing a guy from the Dubai no Dubai to New Zealand, and he had tested negative like two days prior as they required, and then he got on the flight and apparently became infectious while he was on the flight, um, and then infected all these people on the plane uh, upon quarantine in New Zealand. So the issue is that they um, once you're exposed like the next day or two, you're probably not going to ha be have detectable virus to be to pick up positive, right? So it probably won't become to the level of being detectable until a couple of days after that. And then even then, you're not going to get symptoms for a couple of days after that. So there's this period where you're totally infectious, but not not symptomatic. So that's the problem with people like, oh, I was negative before I went to see my mom. Like that actually doesn't mean shit. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean anything. The viral yeah. load has to be at a certain degree before it'll even detect it. Yeah, exactly. And, and look, the reality is this, folks. The reality is this. I'm in Ireland. I'm still in lockdown. We've been in lockdown for the last few weeks. Cases are down 84% since we went into lockdown. It's almost five weeks ago now. And um, like, obviously, we're able to do that because the state looks after us financially, uh, which is different, obviously, than the US. We get about mm -hmm. 1800 bucks a month uh, if we're affected by the coronavirus and mortgages and all of that are kind of, kind of pushed down the road. But wow. we made the decision to lock it down because I think we were getting about 20 deaths a week. Um, and that was far too much oh, for any for us. <laughs> so we so we we locked it down and wow. we made sure that we that we that we enforced that. And then the personal responsibility came in and we have to wear a mask going into any store if we're even near somebody, we have to wear a mask. We're not allowed within three miles of, of our home to exercise, etc. So we took it extremely seriously. And if you look at New Zealand and some parts of Australia, mm -hmm. um, uh, Asia, the Polynesian islands, etc., they all did strict lockdowns, and we're all going to be much better off for it than the USA, which so is only you, reacting to the cases rather yeah. than being proactive. So it's what you so point different. out is exactly the problem with the US, which is exactly number one, our government doesn't help us at all in that regard, mm -hmm. so then we're fucked there. Yeah. Number two, um, <laughs> uh, what was the other thing you said about... Um, like personal responsibility, nobody does oh, that there's here. there's none of that. Yeah, and there's none of that here because people don't believe it. Number three, when you said 20 deaths a week, I chuckled because I was like, wow, what a dream that would be. And to think that you guys took that seriously, 20 deaths a week, and people here think that 2,000 deaths a day isn't something to take seriously. Like, yep. people here are... I, I mean, I've heard people say, well, we've had more than that die from, you know, car wrecks. Car accidents. Who or, right. cares? I never the caught problem. a car wreck from somebody. <laughs> I never <laughs> have either. Don't you guys feel that, you know, COVID has exposed so much about the truly broken parts of yeah. our country? And it, I think the, the truly broken parts of our country kind of boil down to individual responsibility and morals. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that we have pretty much decided that not in my backyard, like, we don't care. And like, like, I'd like to tag on to that lack of empathy, Maggie. The yeah. lack of well, empathy some yeah, people have shown. Yeah, sure. Like but, Patty's but, talking about 20 deaths and that's too much for them. These people are like, oh, 97%, 98% survival. Yeah. Like, we'll, we'll do the math. We get more deaths in Arizona a day than you get in a month mm -hmm. in Ireland. It's like. <laughs> I'm moving to Ireland. I, I know, right? Let's all move to Ireland. 68% of Republicans who were polled said that the COVID deaths were absolutely acceptable. That was fine. 68% said I no problem. What? The problem with what? the COVID deaths is that they keep on doubling. So we were just at a thousand per day, like a couple months ago, and that was horrible. We were even 
at like like a couple hundred per day, and I mean that was also horrible. But now we're at two thousand. If we can get to two thousand, it's just as easy to get to four thousand. And yep. if we can and get to four thousand in our big country, in our big country, we can get to eight thousand, and then sixteen thousand. It's exponential growth, and I'm mm -hmm. sure Christine can tell us all about exponential growth. Yep. But yeah, these it people, looks like this. Whoop. Yeah, and Christina, <laughs> like, and Christina, um, like. I think I know the answer to this question, but what are the odds of us actually fix, like, because we're so out of control here, like, other than a vaccine, is it even possible to patch this shit up at this point? Like, um, or yes, are we just, or I would are we just say, plugging holes? I would say yes, but it's not going to happen without, like, a shit ton more deaths. Like, a lot of damage. It, not only the deaths, but it's going to take... Um, uh, uh, the basically entire healthcare system collapsing, I think, because I think everyone's going to quit from PTSD and from feeling completely unappreciated and right. from feeling like we're worthless, you know, even though we're busting our asses. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to happen. It's just going to happen with a lot of collateral damage along the way. So Florida has got a no mask mandate right now, which is kind of the oh, yeah. opposite of Wait, what, what we should be doing. The no, mask no mask mandate. Yeah, right. so you won't so allow. Piper. Governor DeSanto said that no county can ever put a mask mandate. And that's the governor of Florida, which he's the worst governor. Well, he's I would say, Trump, but the well, there's number one worst governor, which probably is DeSanto. Number two is Georgia's governor. Yeah. So and then that's just Texas. Greg Abbott. Comes, is, oh, is, okay. Yeah. They're all three yeah. bad. When it comes I, I, to COVID, uh, Doug Ducey in Arizona was polled as the worst governor in the entire country. <laughs> is it really a contest, though? Is it? I mean, for them, it is. <laughs> How shitty can I be? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, I know it's hard to, to, to rationalize this, but Trump might be just trying to make this as bad as possible for when Biden takes over. I don't know if yeah. you all saw Trump's Thanksgiving I, proclamation, but he said, I encourage you to gather in small groups, in homes, and in places of worship. So he's encouraging people yep. to gather on Thanksgiving. Do not discount him intentionally trying to make this as bad well, as possible I for think he's trying to f up everything for yeah. Biden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've exactly. been, just COVID. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking that for months that he's just really just trying to fuck us over as much as he can, so Biden has the absolute yeah. worst time fixing any of it. Because his supporters are always going to be Trump supporters. They're always going to be there for him. They're always gonna not do if whatever. they're dead. Well, yeah, if they're dead, but I mean, I don't want, I don't even, even know as much as I hate them. I don't want them to die. Like, <laughs> I don't want them to spread this Do shit to my side. One that marks Christine, her name you brought up a really interesting, uh, you brought up something really interesting about uh, fatigue with medical workers. Oh, yeah. What is, it, what is it like right now working in a hospital? What is the mental, the physical kind of toll that's being taken on medical professionals right now. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's bad. It's bad. I mean, luckily where I live in Massachusetts. So I think Danielle left, but I know she was talking about like how it seems like the kind of um, more affluent populations tend to be more entitled about masks. So here in Massachusetts, we've been, everyone's been really respectful. And I actually found the opposite that the more kind of affluent areas are much more likely to wear masks and be cautious. But um, thankfully, we're, our hospital is not overwhelmed right now. We were in April and May, uh, March and April, but um I don't anticipate it's going to get that bad again. So thankfully for us, like we're managing, we're doing okay. I feel bad for all the other places in the, in the country that are like spiking like crazy and their hospitals are getting rocked. Yeah. It's not good. Because when you, you know, back in like, you remember that in like April, May, when every city was doing this like clap at 7 p.m. for all the healthcare workers and like mm -hmm. they got, healthcare workers get discounts. I can go in the front of the line at the grocery store, all of that. That, that doesn't exist anymore. No one cares anymore. <laughs> And you're mentioning like the PTSD, like the medical professionals are probably going to yep. at some point very, very soon begin to have mental yeah. health repercussions from all of this. And totally true. I mean, because people, you know how many times people have said to me like, well, it's your job. You asked for it. Or like, you know, right. this is something, oh. you know, okay, sure. We're, we're used to death and we're used to suffering and that's what we see, but not this, like, this is a different level of like suffering and death and illness and you know willful ignorance and it's just different it sucks well, it's a play. Lack of empathy it's a for play. you guys yeah. but what's the difference between you guys in the military and the armed services and thank you for your service and draping yourself on the flag and yay for the troops and you know we're the greatest country in the world and all of that are you not on the front lines are you not risking your life every single day are you not in in, in the trenches with with dead people everywhere are you yep. not those people as well right. so why the fuck are people like 
you know, hang, you know, raising up black flags and going, oh, this is the American flag and all of this horse shit. And when you guys are in the trenches and people literally, as you said, don't give a shit anymore because you guys are now conspiracy theorists. Yep. Because it can't possibly be as bad as you guys are saying. Exactly. They're also, they're also remember bad. when we had the 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 sing along with all the celebrities and they did like a we are the world kind of thing for Corona. Um, and it was all about rainbows and it was like, let's support our medical professionals. It has completely shifted now. Mm -hmm. And I, yes. in, my, in the front of my house, we have this big sign and we wrote, thank you essential workers with a big rainbow. And my kids put handprints on it and we leave it out there. And it's still there to this day because Everyone that brings us groceries is still an essential worker mm -hmm. doing the hard work. Nothing has changed. The, the work is being done. The people working in the hospitals, it's being done. It's just unreal that our country is so devoid of empathy at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, I really feel proud to be an American because, you know, Donald Trump, he stepped up. He had those jets flying over those hospitals to honor all the nurses. That was just the nicest thing ever. Back in March, flying over. I can everything. just hear it right now. Yeah, I mean, it's it's getting it's people amazing. to go outside and be together to watch. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's just ridiculous. It was not what the nurses needed. They needed actual, like, masks. Yeah. They needed gloves. They don't need airplanes to fly over. No. That wasn't no. cheap either, Bert. That wasn't cheap either. Mm -mm. I don't know what Trump was thinking. He was saying in speeches He's like, not. oh, we are going to have the flights going over all of <laughs> the hospitals. <laughs> it's going to be the best the hospital flyover in the whole. I'm learning all about Trump. Come on, Patty, Trump Patty, Patty. From He's Patty. a reality TV can host. I, can I, can I get a safety best. check on, on Bert, please? Can I get a safety check? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Can I have an yeah. owl check on owl forty-five? <laughs> He's speaking in tongue. Oh um, my god! I just made it poopy in my panties. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Just bear with me for two moments. Thank you. Yeah. Hashtag Good diaper panda. Oh, diaper. oh no 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 no! Never again. Not since last year. No no Donald no. no. Donald Trump trendy? probably Donald Trump probably thought those airplanes were literally invisible anyway. So you know, no, he, he thought they were flying for him. Yep. Oh, that's true. Yep. Trump really likes those military parades. He Ooh, had military yeah. parades in 2018 too. Like after China had theirs in 2017, he's like, I need to have also very special <laughs> parades for myself because Xi Jinping isn't the only one. <laughs> Can I get an update on that safety check, please? Can I get an update on the safety check? <laughs> take that, him out. Take that. him out. I, I, I think his T-shirt is too tight. I think that's the problem. Leave that man alone. <laughs> Amanda said she likes his shirt. You leave him alone. It's, it's because of baby. Thanksgiving. It's because of Thanksgiving. It's too you tight. Had a I got salad. It. You had a salad for Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. First of all, what? I made a salad for Thanksgiving. No, Bert, Bert you, know, the, you put people. marshmallows into your spuds. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you people? America. <laughs> I did a big food review on the on the day before Thanksgiving. So I did a big like a Jolly Bee Kane's chicken to honor Kane, the guy that died. So I did a, a food review on them both with, with another Kane? creator. Herman. Yeah, oh. Kane's chicken. It's the, the guy that <laughs> he died. Crazy. Well, you guys, I, we've hit our one and a half hour mark, and I just wanted to say thank you all for coming on, and we've had a great show. Um, we're going to wrap it up now. I've got a really awesome video from the Lincoln Project. I think it speaks volumes to what we've been talking about um, you know, this entire time and a lot of uh, being thankful during this time for the things that we do have. So... Um, Let's watch that, and after that's done, uh, it'll be over. But you guys can stick around, the people that are on the show. We can talk afterwards. So thank you all for coming. And before we leave, I want everyone to kind of give a synopsis of your kind of bio and let everyone know about your page. Let's start with Amanda. Hey, Amanda Hen, also known as Nadine is woke. I don't even know what that means, but you know, whatever. Um, I'm on TikTok. Um, Bert put me on Twitter. Um, let's see. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, 
I'm all over the place. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, oh. next, uh, Brain Daddy. Oh, God bless it. Uh, <laughs> I'm just one of two fat guys on TikTok who have minor clout. Uh, the other one is that Irish fella. Uh, Thank oh. you very much. Hey, have you handled your Cersei Lannister Shot problem fired. up there in Ireland? Okay, calm down. Up calm in the down. north. Up in the north. The north. Shocking behavior. Your, your Cersei Lannister problem. Up there. No. Nope. Me or is it everybody else? I don't know. What? Who's everybody Jonathan, else? Have I told you your hair looks beautiful tonight. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> my hair looks old. Moving on. <laughs> Get off of my face! <laughs> well, Brain Daddy, do you want to talk about your page real quick? Uh, I have a I have a page on TikTok, I guess. I Which one? Stuff. Oh, shut up. God. I have a backup page because I got banned. <laughs> <laughs> For showing a shirtless picture of Donald Trump. Don't do it. It's, it's ill advised. <laughs> it was a cartoon. It wasn't even real. All right, next up, Christina. And <laughs> <laughs> Christina NP with seven A's. So Christina NP, I'm on TikTok and Instagram on the same handle. Um, I talk, I'm a nurse practitioner. I talk about um, a lot of COVID education, addressing misinformation and myths, um, calling people out and um, just injecting a little humor and trying to have some fun while um, correcting bullshit out there. <laughs> awesome. All right. Next, uh, Jonathan Davis. Some people like it. Jonathan Davis. Some people like it on TikTok, <laughs> Instagram, and Twitter. <laughs> I only have a TikTok account so I can comment on Christina's posts. <laughs> and yeah, find me and follow me. Pol political humor, bad skits. It's fun. Awesome. And Patty the Panda. Hey everyone, I'm Patty the Panda. And so yeah, my, my TikTok is Patty the Panda. And I only have one account. And um, <laughs> you can you can find on my YouTube channel, Patty the Panda, there's a banner with all of my info on there. Again, if you're looking for a bit of banter, a bit of fun, a charming Irish accent, um, my hair is growing every day, um, and some political content, I've, I've, I've always been right. Just to be clear, I've always been right. And I do these kind of um, sexy deep breath videos every morning. It's more. <laughs> Thirst trap me. waiting to happen. Love it. Oh, yeah. they they are, I've always wanted to pet a panda. <laughs> Next, we've got food expert. So I wanted to say that everybody's information is down below. You can find it in the description and uh, it's open up. This is below. a safety check. Open up. So, this is a safety check. <laughs> <laughs> everyone can, uh, yeah, everyone can follow everybody on this whole thing. And uh, a duchess is a duchess is not here right now. So let's uh, plug her really fast. Also uh, her information is down below. I don't know where she She's went. Hilarious. I think she had bad connection. But her TikTok is down below along with the Instagram and everything. And then so my YouTube channel is called Food Expert. And I come from California and I travel the world and I try to show you guys cool stuff around the world. And uh, today I'm apparently a political activist with all you guys because <laughs> I can't stand Donald Trump. And I've been like that the last three months starting this whole thing with Walter Masterson and Lord Tim Mathias, which is also streaming this right now. So thank you, Lord Tim Mathias, for letting us stream on your channel on YouTube. Wow, and uh, Maya2960 was the original people that started this thing. So, yeah, anyways, uh, yeah, we started this all together, and now we've got 40 people in this group. So we're always changing it up and letting people join, and just every everyone's able to host their own if they want. So, <laughs> anyways, it's just really a lot of fun. So. Uh, and, of those and, then, 40 people, for, and of those 40 people, 15 of those are printed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shut up. Sorry, not sorry. Y'all need us, to have a show. I, we do need to have a show. Yeah. All right. So well, much. you guys, I'm Mermaid Mama Maggie or Maggie Reed. Um, Bert is so nice to let me host on Fridays, and so I'm more than willing to do it, and I'm so happy to be here. I had some weird technical difficulties tonight, but hopefully it will be resolved again. Um, but thank you all for coming, and I hope you have a great week, and I hope, let's see what kind of crazy shenanigans happens next week. Um, so we're going to do our outro video right now. Thanks for coming, guys. Mm -hmm. Bye.